the paragraph I so this is this is provisionally titled Community Resources Committee process for advising the council on policy and bylaw measures. Um, and then in parentheses, I added, which can then be turned into the report with recommendation back to the council. So maybe we can just create the report as we discuss type thing. A is clearly identify the purpose of CRC review, which is the purpose of this step is to ensure that all CRC members are on the same page regarding why the measure is in front of CRC and what CRC's role and ultimate response to the council should encompass. For example, is it to give feedback, make a formal recommendation for or against adoption, or offer advice on a matter for which no action is being contemplated by the council? So that's sort of where this started, and it will put us all on the same page to begin a discussion. Um, Andy, you said you had some specific comments? Yeah, the first specific comment came fr from the discussion of the um, work that we're doing with the planning board on the master plan revision in that discussion on Monday, and the second comment comes out of the housing policy uh, referral that has been made to us. So going to the first one, uh, Alyssa made several comments about um, the policy and um, the nature of the work that's uh, going on actually it comes a little bit out of the housing too because she also mentioned the fact that there's been a lot of work with housing policies over the years that have taken significant amounts of um, time and expertise um, to develop and that we have used consultants um, to develop some of the housing policies that currently exist and um, do we have the capacity? So I was wondering, I, what I hand wrote on my copy was what I called 2A under B, um, which is a, a, just a, so because so, it fits in after two. And it would read something like this, does CRC staff or volunteers have the knowledge, skills, and resources required is, consult, is a consultant required and are there funds available for that purpose? So I put it down as two, two questions under one bullet. So I'll pause there because that was the first of the two that I did. Does the staff or volunteers uh, need to be doing need outside help and have the money for it, is that right? Essentially, yes. I wrote it a little bit longer because what I, again that I wrote and it was it's just to fit between two and B two and B three. Does CRC, comma staff, comma, or volunteers have the knowledge, skills, and resources required? Is a consultant required, and are there funds available for that purpose? Okay, yeah. Because it's not connecting to anything here. So mine's already on my hard drive. But yeah, we're not having success getting it this way. Um, so, so does CRC, so you're looking to, I, I think the way we're formatted B, it would just be an added number three, and so we'd have five sections. Correct. Um, but um, let me make sure I got that right. Does CRC staff or volunteers have the knowledge, skills, or resources required? Are consultants required? Are the funds available for that purpose? is what you're looking for. And that is part of B for Janet's sake, the audience, since we're having problems projecting it, is initial identification of stakeholders, information needed, and prior recommendations. Yeah, we're trying to get my display working, and I can't seem to find that.
I did have one. She found the right copy. is actually copying it because it might have a copy screen so you're going to have to go and get that on a minimum. Dorothy's updating now. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, Are you having connection issues on Google Chrome? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the USB is really weak. Can you see the screen? Okay. I just have to restart my computer. Because it hasn't been having problems. We have one now for Janet. Excellent. So, so I'll get my computer updated then. And I can do that. Um, um, now that she has it, let's not worry about it. Um, we'll work on it later. I have mine. Yes. Yours is working. Okay. Okay, so it's it's my computer apparently, because I ignore the update. <laughs> but thank you for. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't connect to the internet. <laughs> so mine so didn't work. Okay, so we we've got something now. Yeah. And I apologize to the chair that I didn't get this tour in advance, but I. Did yes, this sir. early this morning. That's okay. Um, so, so yeah. So, does anyone have comments on? Uh, you can see it in writing up there. Um, what what Andy was talking about, um, which is determining the knowledge um, of who has what we need for that. Do we have any comments on that requested addition? I, I am still just bowled over by the cost of, of uh, consultants. So my inclination is to see how far we can go with what we have, and if we hire a consultant to have it be a rather limited area. Because we spent an awful lot of money on consultants, and then we don't listen to them. You know, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't, I don't know, but I'm just thinking about the parking thing where there are some good points in there, but it's, you know, really, it's not really going to have much of an influence on what's going on. Right. So I think the point of this is to m have that discussion early as to whether we think we can do it ourselves, how far we want to try to do it ourselves, especially if we're thinking about what's coming forward, the housing policy coming forward and some of the conversations we've had. So I, don't, I personally don't see a problem adding it into that okay. sort of template of let's discuss that. Um, as part of the identifying who might be able to help us on that. Any other thoughts? And Andy, you said you had one other? 
Yes, I um, don't know if it's going to um, have time for it today, but I had uh, suggested a possible um, interim step that we might take regarding the housing um, policy referral for affordable housing. <clears throat> so I got down to the end and I said, um, where, did, where would that fit in? And it came out to then, can CRC respond to the council by the date requested? Should CRC recommend an interim policy to the council? Um, and I just put those out there as two things when um, the chair will be uh, cognizant of what I drafted as a possible interim policy on housing if um, she wanted to bring it forward, but it flowed out of the same place. So I wonder if instead of the fourth sort of D, the referral, because that's sort of at the end of the process, if we move that part up to A, and have an A1 and an A2, as we're identifying the purpose of our review, we also discuss, should we have an interim process? Can we meet the timeline as, as that part of the very first thing we discuss? Um, what, what would, would that be sort of uh, com comport with your thinking, Andy? Yes, this wasn't uh, intended to be placed where it was written. I just, at the end, uh, as I was uh, going through the policy, thought of it and decided to write it down so that it would be somewhere on my copy to bring it up today. Mm -hmm. Pat, did you have a... Other comments on that particular comment? Um, any other comments on this document as a whole? And discussion from committee members? We might have. This is a separate uh, thing. Pat? Can you resend me my SharePoint document now? Reads the agenda when I go to put the impact statement. I don't know how that happened. So I, I will try, but apparently those updates killed my internet access in town hall. <laughs> so I'm not sure I can now. Because <laughs> I can't even like create a new message here. Um, so I, I will make a note somewhere that that needs done. Um, I will read the changes if we're going to vote on it tonight. But, um, but are there any other comments on what was presented? Are there, I, let me finish this. We took um, public comment already. I had not specifically put this one on as public comment, but I will um, accept public comment at this time. Um, so is there public comment? Okay, can you come up, Janet, to the mic and comment? Thank you, um, Janet McGowan. So I worked on the CI, the Community Impact Statement on the Team Act, which is, I don't know what it stands for anymore, but, um, and I'm really excited to see a lot of that lifted and used here, because I, I think that kind of very comprehensive, deep look is what we need, um, probably in all aspects of our life, but particularly when, you know, the town council is acting. Um, one of the things that was really important to the um, TMAC was consulting with the public um, on these issues and collecting information. So I don't, I would, especially since you have a, a community something participation officer, some way of reaching out to the public. It doesn't have to be a meeting, maybe just doing something online or something. But there's tons of people in our pub, in our town that have a lot of information and have a lot of um, input, concerns, ideas, and that could actually help the you know the the assessment itself. 
Um, another thing that was really big is that this idea comes out of the environmental impact statements for, and um, a bunch of things they do in Europe. A similar kind of community impact statement for um, EU actions by agencies. And so an important part of the imp environmental impact is to look at alternatives. And there's always a no action alternative, which sometimes is best. And also just saying, it, the, the goal is not to have a decision made or one idea being proposed, but to look at the range of options on the table and evaluate their impacts. Obviously, you don't want to spend the next decade of your life looking at every decision in this, in this way, but it sort of pushes you back as a decision maker to say, okay, you could do this or this or nothing. And sometimes nothing looks great. Sometimes in your discussions or research, another alternative would emerge and you kind of look at that. And so the whole goal is to get better information to make decisions. And I'm just, I just looked at this, so that's, I'm wondering if there's an, you could add an alternatives analysis um, into the decision making process um, or the assessment process. And then finally, um, it's not, I just read this very quickly, is the endpoint like a report or an assessment that goes to the town council that just says, here's the analysis, here's what we looked at, here are the, all these impacts, and we're not making a recommendation, but here's the information, and then separately making a recommendation. So, I mean, I'm wondering if the report is just like m more, uh, if you can do it, objective. Um, so I will remind the committee members that we tend not to comment on public comment, but we have not finished our own discussion, so if we would like to continue our discussion before we hear a motion, that is perfectly fine. Okay. So thank you for your comment. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you want to include what you've heard as part of our discussion, you can. <laughs> Dorothy. Well, I, I think that we have to do the things that are listed here, but I do not see CRC as a think tank or a study group that issues reports to someone else. I see us as part of a government body that is to issue recommendations, although I do think that uh, the idea of always remembering um, no action is, should, be, should be in there. And I think looking at alternatives is good, but I, I could also see you know, we don't, this, we're not here to spend all our time. I mean, I'm an academic. I don't see that our job here is to be academics, um, but to look at things, think about things, and I, I also think we should consult with the public, and I know there's a lot of expertise in the town, but we're supposed to come up with um, proposals which can include taking an action or not taking an action out of a certain kind. So that, that's my, my kind of thought about that. And I, I realize it's a very delicate balance. We don't want to just be people who act. Uh, we have to be people who think and weigh and evaluate and look and, um, and hear from people who know the past, um, which is why, truthfully, I, I always enjoy what Alyssa has to say, whether I agree with it or not, because um, I like knowing what happened in the past and how it worked out or think about how it worked out. But then we look at where we are in the present and we're all worrying about where we're going in the future and I think we have to be cognizant that, that we're connected to a body of government that's supposed to, to do some actions to make changes or to protect things or add new growth, whichever. Pat. If we look at uh, D, the CRC vote regarding the referral, the purpose of this step is to make a formal recommendation to the council to guide the council in its actions the report on this step. So to me, we are recommending and we are reporting on how, why, alternatives, et cetera. So I feel like your suggestions are embedded in that, in D. I, I, I personally, I'll, and I'll, I'll take up one other one about Dorothy's comment about public opinion and all. Um, D, what will become four, it was up here, it was three at one point. Does CRC believe it has enough knowledge regarding town resident and business opinion? So as we start the analysis, we'll be saying, do we have an idea? And if not, how do we go about getting it? Um, so I, I think we've embedded some of that in there, not, not specifically in terms of how, but at least looking at do we have that knowledge or think we do, and if not, what else? I, also, we always have public comment here. Anything that comes back out of this goes back to councils. Council always has public comment. Um, and so 
you know, we've got district meetings and everything, but, but we can certainly look at that as part of embedded into what information do we need. Andy. I guess the question that I would also want to at least have this committee focus on is, in addition to opinions, which is where what that is essentially reading right now, is there any expertise that is available in the community? And when I'm thinking about our work ahead in affordable housing, I can name several people who live in Amherst and have worked in the career of affordable housing development who could potentially be approached as to whether they have any resources that they might offer to us from their own experience. Uh, and uh, that uh, whether we want to broaden it a little bit to encompass that aspect. So with that comment on the new number three that goes with your handwritten comments, Andy, or yes. the, which was knowledge, skills, resources. I just added another quote question. Is there any expertise in the community that CRC might be able to tap into? Which would, I think, address what you just said. I, I think that would be uh, a good way to approach it. And I did write, um, to, at the beginning it says, does CRC staff, uh, CRC staff or volunteers have the knowledge, skills? So it sort of was reaching out in that direction mm -hmm. also. Any other thoughts on this? So do you, does the committee think we are ready to vote to potentially adopt this as sort of our review template, I guess is what I can call it. Um, Dorothy. I, I would like to ask Mr. Zomik if he has any thoughts on this. No, overall, I think it's it's a great start. Um, I do think the areas that you've identified, particularly number three, I th I think having you know we know that there is a great deal of knowledge and expertise in our community. So having being open to having people those those experts come in and and talk with you would be great, both from a staff standpoint, but also you know experts in our community, volunteers who work in the academic community or the professional community here. Um, I think, Dorothy, your comments about consultants are, you know, uh, they're um, important. Um, having worked in town for many, many years, I, I do think there are many occasions where we do, as a community, uh, almost demand outside expertise from consultants. We use them in engineering. We use them in parking studies. We're, if we proceed with a zoning, uh, a rewrite of the zoning bylaw, we are going to need to bring in experts from outside of Amherst. Um, it brings it brings new perspectives, new ideas, et cetera. So I think that was good to hit on that. Um, I guess my final suggestion might be that this, you might vote on it, but it be a work in progress to see how it works the first couple of times you use it, and you may amend it a, a little bit. So I think it's a great start. So if we are ready for a motion before anyone makes that motion, I'd like to read the changes from the document in front since I'm the one that cannot put the document up. <laughs> um, the first one is under A, clearly identify the purpose of CRC review is to create two numbers. The first one would be what's already there. The second numbered two would be can CRC respond to the council by the date requested should CRC recommend an interim um, policy to the council. Um, I don't know whether policy is the right word there. Interim action maybe because it's not always a policy. So I'm going to change policy to action an interim action to the council. Um, so that that's the first change from what's in front and what's in the packet. The second change is under B, initial identification of stakeholders, information needed and prior recommendations. It's to insert a new number three, moving three and four to four and five, that reads 
Does CRC staff or volunteers have the knowledge, skills, or resources required? Are consultants required? Are the funds available for that purpose? And is there any expertise in the community that CRC might be able to tap into? Um, and those are the changes that I have um, from what was in the packet. If people are ready, is there a motion to, I guess it would be to adopt? Well, I will make that motion. It's to adopt this community impact report template. Is that what I called it? That's what I called it, right? Dorothy, is that the motion you're making? So I move that we adopt the Community Resource Committee process for advising the council on policy and bylaw measures. Uh, is that my title? That was your title on the schedule. Awesome. <laughs> is there a second to that motion? Second. Uh, any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, um, raise your hand and say aye. Fine, that is unanimous with one absent. So I will get that to Athena as changed so that we can get it posted on our com committee webpage as a process we have adopted so people can see it and also get it into appropriate SharePoint folders and all. Um, Adopted. That brings us to item C, which is designating, titled designating a CRC member to attend planning board meetings regarding the master plan update. So I, did I put, let me look at the packet. Um, the update, so in the packet is a draft update process memo. And, the, and I included this in this, this was their draft. I do not know whether, the, whether anything changed, okay, from the draft, but inside of this draft, there is a section that says on page two, um, there is, I think it's on page two, let me find it. I'm not going to be able to find it now. Um, oh, it's on page three, the paragraph under, in addition, there are chapters for introduction, goals, and policies, and implementation. In the middle of the next paragraph, um, it says the planning board will invite appropriate staff members and boards and committee to send feedback. A representative from CRC is expected to attend these meetings. Any additional CRC or town council members are encouraged to attend these planning board meetings to gain a better understanding of the update process and stay informed, but not take an active role in the planning board discussions and during the public comment period. Um, when I was speaking with the planning board chair about this, the planning board chair indicated that the sentence a representative from CRC is expected to attend these meetings was intended as a participate also in the meetings, um, not just attend for sort of on the council level, what we've been talking about as liaisoning for updating process, but as potential for participating in that discussion. I, I don't know the extent to participating, but certainly beyond what we as a council had discussed a liaison's role would be. Um, and seeing that that was their hope, um, I felt since a liaison could not satisfy that role given our restrictions on liaisons that we as CRC probably needed to discuss and potentially name a representative to do that formally. Um, the goal would be planning board still meets Wednesday nights. Um, and so if a CRC member is speaking as a representative of CRC, it would be important for CRC to have discussions about that prior to and so the goal would be to make sure since planning board meets on Wednesday nights and we tend to meet Wednesday mornings, we would be able to have a discussion on Wednesday mornings about what they're seeing Wednesday night so that the representative can go in with what CRC discussed. Um, I 
and certainly this is a trial balloon from all sorts of views in terms of how this is going to work. Um, but I think the first step is to at least designate someone from this committee to be the person attending as the representative to report back on those discussions that we would have in the morning. So let's talk about thoughts on having that designation and then we can talk about space. Okay. <laughs> Dorothy. So, um, and, and this is, I think, I think we, you mentioned that might be a problem. Um, planning board, it was not listed on the, of the committees with, uh, that the GOL thought they needed to have a committee, a uh, rep on, a liaison for. And the planning board is the one that is now in charge of the revisions of the master plan and will come back to us. And so uh, that would be, to my mind, you would be the best uh, rep there. Um, Wednesdays were a problem. And in, the, in case you can't do it, then I would like to do it. Um, I've been attending it. But then that means that you could then attend um, the zoning subcommittee, which is now on Tuesday nights. Um, I don't know if that works out. But Pat. First of all, I think the, the, the first, what we were going to look at whether was whether that we wanted this and then who. And I think that it's an excellent idea. So if we can get that out of the way, then I'd be happy to speak to um, appointing someone. Does Andy, do you have any comments on whether we should be doing this? Andy? Yeah, yeah um, like I, there isn't much in the way of comment I, because I'm always um, in favor of uh, collaboration and communication. And this is consistent with those principles. So it sounds like we're good with making that designation. Um, Dorothy? I think just as long as we understand and keep track of our roles and that it has to be um, that the body that we're talking about wants that level of participation. Otherwise, we can attend and move back. So that I think that's a delicate balance. But I do think that it's important for the two groups to know what's going on and to be in constant communication as long as we don't step on toes. Pat? Um, it's hard for me to volunteer somebody who's not here, but I think that Steve would be an excellent person to take on this role. I don't know whether he can do it in terms of the evening or uh, family issues right now, but um, I think he has a wide range of expertise that would be helpful. It, it also seems to me that whoever the person is has to be representing CRC, not themselves. I'm going to address Dorothy's um, earlier suggestion that it might be wise for me to be the person. So I have a regular Wednesday night conflict um, that weekly, except in the summer, would present a conflict to attending the meeting. Certainly when planning board asks the chair of CRC to attend on an occasional basis, I deal with that conflict, but I would be very hesitant to um, agree to be a representative when I don't really want to have that conflict on such a regular basis. So I, I if anyone's thinking, you know, I know Dorothy suggested that might be a, an issue, a potential, I would decline to be the representative on that regular basis. Um, I certainly talk to the chair of the planning board for other coordinating issues plenty of times, but I think it would also be good for CRC to expand that representative role anyway, as we talked about at the retreat about expanding leadership opportunities, and this is certainly one of them too. Um, so that as it relates to me. Um, Dorothy has been going to the meetings. She is CRC's vice chair. Um, so that is a name I would also put out there as a potential representative um, because she's been going and she is our vice chair, Steve Opp obviously is also an option. He's served on the planning board before and been through this process. Um, I, I don't know whether we have the ability to designate someone today or whether 
you know, with Steve absent, it's hard to even know whether he would consider it um, or, or, or not. Um, it sounds like, Dorothy, you would consider seeing the representative, is that right? And as I have been, uh, it's not quite sure what role they want. I mean, I think they want to have an ongoing conversation or channel of conversation with you, which you say you have his argument set up. I think that's very important. Um, I have basically just reported on, um, and I have tried very, very hard not to say anything at the planning board because they're pretty, pretty strong and they know what they're doing. And um, you know, so I'm not, not sure to what degree of participation they want. So that might need to be clarified. Um, how that would be. I, I do think it's, it has to be done carefully. Dave. Yeah, the one thing that comes to mind as, as I'm thinking about this, and, and Andy said communication, collaboration, is do you need to think about this in the context of our next discussion, which is the zoning question, or the zoning discussion? And so, I, the idea that we've been talking about is that a modest update to the master plan would be occurring simultaneously to a more robust uh, review and update of the zoning bylaw, which is a much heavy, much bigger lift, much heavier lift. So I just wonder, as, as you're thinking about your own sustainability, how many meetings you go to, I, I would hate to think, you know, a couple weeks from now, you might be thinking, well, we need, do we need another representative or, you know, to represent you all with the planning board on zoning? I don't, I don't know. I just wanted to throw that in the mix. And I, I, I don't have an answer, but it, it just strikes me that you all are, are worried about your own sustainability. So is this one person that is going to meetings or is it two? I, I, I don't know. I'll just put that out there. Well, if I had to choose, I, I, I am very interested in the zoning subcommittee. Um, so, you know, we can't speak for Steve. Um, that he might be a good rep for the planning board. Um, and I would stay doing whatever I'm doing with the zoning subcommittee. I would just add, too, though, that everything the zoning subcommittee does comes back and is discussed at a full planning board meeting. So I think it's important to recognize that, again, I was just thinking, you know, we're probably gonna talk about some sort of parallel structure in terms of process of modest updates to the master plan and, and more robust uh, uh, rewrite of the zoning, sub, uh, zoning bylaw. But, uh, you know, everything has to come back through the planning board at their regular meeting and, and be discussed, so I just, I just didn't want yeah. to think two of you would need to be at every planning board. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. So I think for the purposes of this conversation, it's important to keep this, this representative designation constricted to when the planning board is discussing at their meetings master plan updates and changes because that that's the process we are on right now um, and that the memo sort of talked about that those updates will be, as of this memo, at the planning board, not at the zoning subcommittee. And it's when they're specifically saying, here are the changes we're discussing. One of their proposals was to have a TRC representative there. Again, to try and make this process more smooth so that when that final draft comes, we've already, we've been, as a committee, kept updated on what the changes are, potentially done stuff. So, so this is not, in my mind, if you're designating a representative, it is solely for that update that the council just passed its own process on, that communication portion and all, and with the, TR, the planning board's desire, not sort of representative to everything the planning board is doing. That, that, that would completely, to me, conflict with the liaison role and, and potentially get too involved in an independent body work. This is, in, I think, sort of at their request um, for this process. Um, Andy, do you have any thoughts on 
anything right now? Because you have not been in this, so I just want to make sure I get anything that you want to say out there. So the, um, I don't really have anything to add further to the discussion that we've been having about uh, the communication role and having a representative. I think that we've had a robust and healthy conversation. The only thing that I added that there's, were these handwritten notes is on this section um, that we talked about public outreach and participation is required. Um, and I, as I was rereading it this morning before, um, before coming over, I realized that we didn't say anything about using Amherst media, using other media, including social media, and um, also uh, in the social media context, whether um, Amherst Indy, but sort of how do we reach out to the community? Uh, Alyssa alluded to this um, in the Monday discussion of making sure that there's the most robust possible community engagement in the process at some point and whether um, that um, we just want to encourage that I believe I would, I would add that um, uh, the Amherst Indy has uh, been doing a good job of reporting on some of the committees and um, uh, I would say in a pretty there are opinion pieces in it, but there's just some plain, straightforward reporting on, on committees that have been uh, that are useful. So I think, given that we have two potential nominees on the table, one of whom is not here, um, I'm not going to seek any motion today because we absolutely need to talk to the other potential one. I will, as chair, go go to Steve um, and and talk to him, and I'll talk to Dorothy too, and then I'll put this back on the agenda. In two weeks, um, it's, I, I don't believe, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Janet might be able to correct me too, updates, the next planning board meeting probably will not have actual update language at the meeting. Are they ready for a first, you know, this one has starting with some of these sections, are, are those any of those sections potentially ready for the next, for a planning board meeting within the next two weeks? Ms. Brasbrook is going to join us for the zoning, for the zoning. Uh, so she okay. might, I'm sure she can answer that question. Okay, so maybe it, if that question is there will be something, maybe we designate an interim before a permanent, before we can talk to Steve or something so that we make sure if that is going to happen before our next CRC meeting, we've got someone ready to go. But So we'll wait for Christine to be able to get that. And again, keep in mind, some of these sections, these these might be very modest, right. you know, adding a section, adding a link. I mm -hmm. mean, this isn't, you know, going to be change every section, uh, you know, with an extensive rewrite. It might just be adding links to, you know, land use uh, or natural and cultural resources, the update to the Open Space and Recreation Plan was completed in 2017, and here's a link to that document. So, Chris can give us more in a few minutes. So why don't we sort of table this for now? We'll put it on next time's agenda. We might come back to it this meeting, depending on what we hear from Christine. Do you know if she's going to be able to join us shortly? Because our next item agenda is zoning yes. bylaws. Okay. Okay. We're ready if she's ready. If not, we can move on the minutes <laughs> and then just finish them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we will skip over to minutes. We have three sets of minutes to adopt. Um, January 8th, 2020, January 29, 2020, and February 3rd, 2020. The February 3rd ones our, are our retreat minutes. Um, the minutes from January 8th, are, that are in the packet are revisions that I proposed. Um, they were very minor. I think a word was missing on page two. I added the word pay. It, it said the maximum that a resident would is $3, so I added the word pay. Um, and art in one place I found was not capitalized. Those 
were my changes, recommended changes. Um, to the January 8th, are there any other recommended changes? No. Okay. Um, January 28th minutes. January 29th minutes. Which day are they? Um, January 29th, <laughs> not the 28th. Um, are there any recommended changes to those minutes? Those minutes are extensive, like eight pages. <laughs> that is not a knock on you, Athena. We love your minutes too. <laughs> I am not hearing of any changes to the January 29th minutes. Hey, Rob. We're going through minutes while we're waiting for people, so we'll be ready shortly. Um, and then the next set is the retreat minutes of February 3rd. Are there any recommended changes to those? Someone's still streaming them. Uh, okay. Any changes, Andy? Yeah. I'm not hearing any changes, so at this time I'll accept a motion to adopt the January 8th, 2020, January 29th, 2020, and February 3rd, 2020 minutes as presented. That's my motion, Athena, and Pat's second. All those in favor? Raise your hand and say aye. That is a unanimous with one absent vote. So we are done that, which means we are moving on to item 4A, zoning bylaws to recommend a plan for approaching the zoning bylaw revisions. This was referred to us on November 18th. We first had a very mini discussion on December 18th. We are bringing it back now that the master plan process that we came through has been approved by the council. Um, and the planning board has actually, I believe, approved their own process. Dave. I just wanted to preface this by saying that I didn't ask Rob or Chris to prepare anything. I said that you were going to have kind of a, you know, maybe a, a second follow-up conversation about process. So I didn't want to put them on the spot with, you know, with, with a presentation. What well, wasn't planning on that. So <laughs> but, but I do want to acknowledge that both Rob Mora and Christine Brestrup are here. Um, to help us or answer any questions if we do have any as we begin this discussion too. So we had a prior discussion. At that discussion, the, the discussion sort of focused around um, whether, um, I, th I think I had presented that the staff was thinking it might be a good time to look at, a, at zoning bylaw changes in a comprehensive manner. Obviously we would not be the ones looking at them ourselves um, but we have to similar to the master plan try to come up with some sort of process for dealing with them as they come up um, whether they be comprehensive or whether they be non comp you know it, it, it could be a proposal for changing an entire section or the entire use plan um, or it could be a, a proposal to change a sentence in one section of the bylaw, um, depending on what's coming in time. Flood mapping will have bylaw changes. We already know that from our Monday night presentation. When they come, what is our process for evaluating, doing the hearing, working with the planning board because and the zoning subcommittee? We have this um, council motion and approval to do a joint hearing 
how are we going to get to that and do the exchange of information required, which I think goes back to what Dave said is when we were talking about a COC representative for the master plan updates as they are presented at the planning board meeting, is that something we wanna consider for this or is a liaison to the council or the CRC sufficient? What, what do we wanna do? So I, that's my intro. I haven't prepared any proposed plan or anything because I think we need those as committee to discuss what we're looking for and looking at. So any thoughts? Um, might it be helpful for Chris to give us kind of an update of where the, where the planning board and zoning subcommittee is, you know, in, in their discussions about right. zoning? Yes. That might be a place to jump <laughs> Thank off. You. You told him no presentations. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I'm going to pass something out if they want to. Okay. Can we give one to Athena too? And if you've got enough for Janet. Hello, I'm Chris Brestrup, Planning Director. Good morning. Um, so the Planning Board and the Zoning Subcommittee of the Planning Board have been looking at potential zoning amendments for a long time. And they've developed this chart, which I just passed out, which sort of highlights the zoning changes that they think are most important. Um, the ones in the top tier are in the blue tier are the ones that they think have highest priority. And the second tier, which is kind of a salmon color, is the second priority. And then the third tier, which is green, is the third priority. Now these priorities shift around as the conversation goes on. But this is, um, as they decided at last January, I think it was January 14th that they um, produced this list. So the zoning subcommittee and the planning board have been eager to work on zoning. Um, they see a number of issues um, related to downtown, related to housing, related to parking, um, signs, inclusionary zoning, um, so lots of things that they would like to work on. They, they haven't really um, submitted anything to town council over the past year because they recognize that you all were establishing your processes for everything and um, you know, weren't really in a position to take on zoning. Although you did, um, you did take on a zoning topic last summer where you repealed the old zoning bylaw and replaced it with a new zoning bylaw um, in order to bring the zoning bylaw into conformance with um, the town charter. So that was um, actually a very good sort of dry run, or maybe it wasn't really a dry run, it was a real run. Um, and you know, sort of set a pattern for how you might do this in the future. I think between Athena and me, we can um, reconstruct the pathway that we used back then. We had some pretty good help from, well, Lynn Griesmer was very um, involved, so was the then town clerk, Margaret, um, and we put together a, a pathway to bring zoning amendments to the town council, so I will, um, with Athena's help, resurrect that and perhaps be able to present it to you the next time we meet. Um, the planning board, as I said, has a number of things that it's particularly interested in. It also has some money, or at least we hope it has some money. It has $40,000 from a previous year and we're hoping to get another $60,000 in this year's capital budget to um, hire consultants to help us with zoning. And there are a couple of areas that we feel like we could really use some help. One of them is parking. Parking is really a difficult nut to crack and the picture of it keeps changing throughout the country and in the state and advice, you know, we get different types of advice from different entities. So we'd really like to take a, a close look at parking. There's always a discussion about parking in every site plan review that comes up, whether we should follow the bylaw or not follow the bylaw, and grant waivers. 
So that's one item. Another item is signs. And um, Mr. Mora, who's here with me today, has been struggling with the sign bylaw for um, years, ever since he first arrived. It's very, it conflicts with itself, and it's um, really not into the 21st century in terms of what it requires and what it allows. There was a recent Supreme Court case that um, struck down any, any use of um, content when you're evaluating signs. So that's something that we have to deal with, and we haven't dealt with it yet. We've been getting advice from Bob Ritchie about that, but um, we haven't put anything together yet. And then we have inclusionary zoning, which again is really um, a topic of conversation constantly about you know how, how, how much do we want to require of developers? Um, how much do they want to, how much do we want them to be partners with us in providing affordable housing? So we think we could use consultants on all three of those topics, parking, signs, and inclusionary zoning. And there may be other things as well. Um, Rob Mora has a kind of comprehensive um, view of how to approach the zoning bylaw, um, which he will probably want to speak to you about uh, this morning. Um, but I'm speaking from the planning board and the zoning subcommittee point of view and just letting you know what they've been thinking about. Um, as you mentioned, Ms. Haneke, uh, they are very interested in getting their flood mapping zoning amendment through soon, but other things come up like z uh, for voting requirements for the planning board for site plan review. Um, as a result of changing the size of the planning board from nine members to seven members, um, we have a kind of residual or vestigial uh, requirement in our zoning bylaw, which is really based on having a nine-member planning board, and it doesn't really make sense anymore since we have a seven-member planning board, but we actually have to make that um, change in the zoning bylaw. We can't just reinterpret the words that are there because they're you know, black and white words. We can't reinterpret them. So probably what I envision is going to happen is that Mr. Morrow will lead um, um, a major rewrite of the zoning bylaw, if you all agree with that and if the planning board agrees with that. And then periodically, over the next six to 12 months, we'll be bringing smaller things to you or individual things to you just because they, they have a kind of a short time span that you know, has to be acted on. Um, so I think that kind of summarizes what I have to say about zoning. And maybe Mr. Morrow would like to share some thoughts with you about his major rewrite. Sure. Uh, very, <laughs> very quickly, I think it'll help as you think about process, but uh, I am uh, planning to join Chris at a planning board meeting coming up in, in the beginning of March uh, and uh, also the zoning subcommittee just before that. But uh, so far, uh, very generally, I'm thinking about this in three different levels, uh, you know, looking at a page by page review of the zoning bylaw. Uh, from the very beginning, we need to really address the design and layout formatting of the bylaw. You know, so we're not turning the book sideways, looking at tables. We have it made up uh, from documents in various places that don't work well together when we're trying to put it together and update it. So really clean that, the, the basic formatting of the bylaw up. In that level, it also include improving the graphics uh, that you see in the bylaw today uh, and also the basic corrections where footnotes refer you to places where the language isn't there or it's the wrong uh, reference, um, and then adding definitions. You know, these are the types of changes that I think are going to be uh, mostly or entirely prepared by staff and presented to the planning board uh, for review of the zoning subcommittee first and then review to the planning board. The next level would be um, taking a look at a lot of these things that's on the, the, the the schedule in front of you there that may have already even been prepared in the past by the zoning subcommittee, uh, possibly even reviewed by the planning board, uh, and start to look at how to incorporate those into the bylaw, where they fit, and uh, get those uh, ready. Propose additional graphics where we could use some, uh, and uh, really, um, uh, I, I guess work out work work on. Um, examples like um, design standards, fewer special permits, um, residential and commercial zones, um, 
we are often uh, asked about where can we put a craft brewery and our bylaw just doesn't have that opportunity in uh, the locations that they would want to be set in. Uh, so it's really starting to look at things that we see day to day that might be smaller uh, amendments or opportunities to put into the bylaw. And then the third level really gets into things uh, Chris was probably talking more about uh, where we might want to bring a consult consultant in, in early on and work with the planning board from the very beginning, uh, whether they're parking regulations, considering uh, whether or not 40R moves forward, uh, apartment standards, uh, so really bigger, uh, bigger discussion items uh, that would um, uh, really address areas of the bylaw that need to be looked at. So that's the way I'm going to approach it in the meeting with the planning board are these, these levels of, of amendments uh, where, you know, hopefully if we get uh, a positive response to that, we'll be able as staff start working on this right away with at least the, the first level and part of the second level. Dorothy. So <clears throat> your, your first task is uh, cleaning it up, making it more easily understandable and internally consistent. Um, and then that's gonna help and make it easier, I guess, to deal with some of the tricky areas that people have been talking about. Is that how you see it? Right, and try to create the framework to insert, you know, those those larger uh, amendment possibilities, and not to say they're all going to happen, you know, right here. That we're calling it a comprehensive review of the bylaw, uh, but we'll along the way we'll be able to decide which ones we want to move ahead with now, which ones might need more work and might take a little bit longer. But at least we'll we'll have it in mind and we'll have the bylaw designed in a way that it will be able to accept it. Uh, and integrate things like, you know, form-based code standards with our current use-based code standards. Uh, so we'll be, able to, we'll be able to really set that up. Pat. What do you need from us as a council or as a committee? Maybe a little direction. So, you know, we, we are kind of, you know, working our way through the very beginning of this, and we're going to start with the zoning subcommittee, start with the planning board, and hope there's, um, you know, a positive response to this idea. Hope that everyone will either already know or recognize how much work the bylaw needs uh, in, in every area that I talked about. It's not that we want to do this just for fun. Uh, it really does need, it really does need to get looked at. It's a big task, I understand that, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll uh, at least be able to all agree that it's, it should be looked at. Uh, the bylaw review committee which had counselors on it, um, the second iteration of it. Would it be helpful for counselors to be working with you, or would that be an impediment? Uh, serious and not my feelings don't get hurt. Yeah, I think I'm, you know, open to that discuss hearing what you think about that, and, um, you know, absolutely we want to figure out when's the right time to bring those amendments in pieces through the various, uh, to the various committees, including this one, because I think it will be helpful to have an opportunity, you know, to, to talk publicly about what we're working on, every opportunity we can have that. You know, our zoning subcommittees are late in the day, planning board are at night, this is a, a, a nice daytime meeting, so I think that'll, that'll help to have all those opportunities. Wendy? So there were a couple of issues that, that have, uh, one that you described and one that I thought of additional, and I just want to put them out there on the table. And um, the one that you described, and just take a little bit more onto it, is the, the sign regulation, because, um, Rob, you were working with the select board when it existed previously, and uh, my colleague, Ms. Kruger, was very concerned about the sign regulation, and I just wanted to explain to the committee that some of the issues that she raised um, were the appearance of signs and sort of the visual um, and how it affects the appearance of our commercial areas and uh, our downtown. Uh, things like window coverage, how much of a window gets covered by signs in some types of shops, whether we want flashing signs, uh, uh, signs that are just placed on the sidewalk, and uh, the uh, frustration that you were uh, expressing was is that the way the 
bylaws written doesn't allow us to really address some of those concerns that she was raising. So I would hope that as we go through the signs, we don't um, lose some of the issues that had been raised and talked about at that point. Um, and the other one has to do with uh, the marijuana retail bylaw, whether that should be revisited because the way the bylaw is currently constructed, what we've effectively found is that it's um, virtually impossible to consider whether we would want to have marijuana retail in our largest commercial district, our town center. And uh, the, uh, without getting into the complications, because you know what they are, uh, whether that should be something that we, uh, as a community, have an opportunity to revisit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask a few questions and weigh in. So I think, personally, what Rob presented of that review on the three layers is appealing to me. Um, you know, there are, as Andy said, some parts of our zoning bylaw that that really do need addressed um, in a large manner. Um, but we need to be cognizant, I think, of you guys' time and ability to, to do stuff. So some of it might need consultants. Um, and all. The question I would have goes back to what Pat asked, which is the what do you need from us is more of, and, and this is something we need to talk to the planning board about too, and potentially the zoning subcommittee is the in this new form of government, the council also has to hold a public hearing on all zoning bylaw changes, whereas in the former form, it, the only public hearing that was held, I believe, was at the planning board level. And so what I think, and we have, as this committee, has been tasked with the body of the council that holds that public hearing. And we have been asked by the council to hold it jointly with the planning board. And so what I think we as a committee need to discuss, but I'd like you guys' thoughts on this too. If we're going to be holding a joint hearing, how much information and how much involvement should we have in the development of that bylaw as CRC prior to the holding of that joint hearing? It's, it's my understanding, I guess, that the hearing is held sort of when the bylaw is pretty much ready to be presented sort of as a final draft, you hold the hearing and then you make any changes necessary at that point, not sort of pre-development. And if that's the case, should CRC be involved pre-development or not? And if so, how much and how? And I think that's where we get into this process. So I'd like to hear staff's thoughts on when it might want think CRC's involvement or the council's involvement in zoning changes would be most helpful and most useful. Um, and then I guess it's up to us to figure out how to, what to do with that, but then also the committee's thoughts on that. So just to start out, I think there are some items that probably wouldn't be that interesting to the CRC. <laughs> um, me, you know, the formatting issues and um, you know, potentially some of the smaller changes that need to be made in order to make the bylaw consistent. Um, and then there are certainly things that the CRC would be interested in, such as um, making adjustments to setbacks and heights and different things in the downtown and the BL and um, some of the areas that have recently experienced a lot of development. Um, so, you know, keeping in touch is certainly a good idea and then um, I'm not exactly sure, you know, what the pro what the process would be, but I would think that you would want to have a lot of input or a lot of exchange of ideas in those areas that are large and potentially controversial, and probably less um, involvement in the smaller things because it wouldn't really be a good use of your time. So how to sort that out? I'm not quite sure yet how to do that. Do you have any thoughts, Rob, and then uh, Andy? Yeah, so I think, you know, I, we will know more after we have the discussion with the planning board of how much, how involved they want to be in the development, working through the process of developing the bylaw amendment. 
and how much the zoning subcommittee will do uh, along the way. But it, it seems to me that you know there should be multiple visits here as we're developing larger sections of the bylaw, and you know perhaps as Chris said, the smaller items could be grouped. You know, chapters one, two, and the definition section could be grouped together as as a couple of presentations to this group, uh, and probably done efficiently that way. And then we can spend more time on some of the bigger pieces. But um, I'm not sure there's a, a, a really good prescription for it. But you know, more than once before we're at the point with the planning board to say we're done and ready to send this along, I think would be important. Andy. Yeah, it's a, as, as we were talking about process, I just was reflecting back on what our former form of government process was like. And um, it was frequently painful because uh, friends who were on the zoning subcommittee and planning board would spend uh, hours, days, weeks, months, years developing a proposal and then bringing it to town meeting and because town meeting only met twice a year and there was no ongoing communication method, it didn't pass. And the level of frustration for, those, for the planning board that had spent so much time working on these things was just tremendous. And uh, the advantage we have with the council and one of the things that was put forward by proponents of the charter was year-round government and the fact that the body is working year-round. Um, so um, we're into a very tricky area and I just wanted to observe that because we don't want to incur um, and infringe on the um, role of the planning board. But on the other hand, we want to make sure that the communication exists so that we can use the new form of government to avoid that level of frustration that existed with the prior form of government. Any other thoughts or questions? Dorothy. It, it, it is a fine line and it's, it's sometimes not, I'm not sure how to, to walk it. Um, for example, at the zoning subcommittee, um, I have tried um, not to sit at the table <clears throat> and not to take an active part. But, because we were told we weren't, I wasn't officially a liaison, but we were told that we weren't to really get into things where we didn't belong. And yet, I know that uh, uh, Chris Brestrup has asked my opinion at various times. And so, I think what I really want to know is what level of involvement, communication, um, is it just listening, learning, and being able to report back to the council? Um, is it reporting, uh, if I know, of, if asked a question about what CRC said or does, has done, being able to answer that? Because um, I think we want a good process and we don't want people annoyed with us. So I'd like to know what kind of interaction you are looking for from CRC. Um, so it looks like there may be a formal process for interaction, which would be Mr. Mora and myself coming to um, CRC meetings and presenting what, what has been developed by ourselves and by the planning board. And um, maybe, I don't know about this, maybe there's an informal process where CRC members attend zoning subcommittee and planning board meetings. Um, that is a little bit less clear cut because it's um, not clear whether CRC members are speaking for themselves or speaking for the CRC. So I suppose if that could be clarified, um, you know, there may be some value in having CRC members attending the planning board meetings and zoning subcommittee meetings and, you know, communicating information that they hear at the meetings to the CRC. Um, so I'm, I'm not, so the second thing, I'm not quite sure how that will work. The first thing, certainly we're ready and willing and able to come to you and present things. I, I think you will probably need to dis discuss how you want that informal um, information passing 
to, to go about and maybe discuss it with the town manager. So what I'm hearing is things are coming at various potential levels um, from Rob and Chris, some sooner, some later, some as they need to be coming. What I'm hearing from the, comp the committee here is potential involvement prior to that hearing that we probably would really like to have the information before scheduling the public hearing for the council's point and potential even input into what that change might look like depending on what it is um, prior to that hearing so we don't schedule a hearing and us ourselves have n really no background on what we're holding the hearing on. Um, that the staff is willing to come to CRC meetings during the development to gain that feedback and I think I'm hearing from the committee that that would probably be useful. Um, and so maybe what the next step is is for me to attempt or someone if someone else is willing to to attempt to draft sort of another flow chart essentially that says here's maybe how things might work um, that includes communication with the planning board chair and the zoning subcommittee chair like I, I'm, I have no idea what as I sit down to maybe do this what it might actually look like but involve a lot of stuff without stepping on planning boards toes and their you know their sort of the, the main creator of changes and drafter of changes and, and proponent of changes, but to try and avoid, trying to come up with something that avoids that the legislative body doesn't see it till the very end and therefore feels they had no input and then feels their only option is to reject something that then creates all sorts of things to try and get a better, smoother process that might allow things to hit that compromise level if needed prior to it coming to the full council, which would also require CRC communicating regularly with the council mm -hmm. on what's going on too. Um, so it's not just the five of us getting the input, it's the whole council. Um, so if people are willing, I am willing to attempt to come up with something that's probably not words, that's more flow charty right now, um, that maybe we might be able to look at at a next meeting, an idea. Because I think from my speaking with the planning board chair and from what Chris said today, some things, and what we heard on Monday about flood mapping, some of these hearings are going to be happening probably within the next month or two. Um, and so to have an idea of what we might wanna do before those hearings need held might be useful. Does that sound like an okay plan for now on this matter? Andy. Yes. <laughs> Andy's like, as long as it's not me, I'm good. <laughs> okay, so I will attempt a flow chart based on the conversation. Um, and again, I'm, I'm seeing some desire for a member of the public to make public comment. I have not set anything out for specific public comment, but I will accept something at this time if there is a desire for public comment. So, um, Janet McGowan, the planning board and the zoning subcommittee. and. Um, just as to the last question about the flowchart, I would suggest talking to the planning board first about before you make the, the decision on how to communicate with them and, and the planning department, because I think that might have been faster um, in the last process. Um, I'm not speaking on behalf of the planning board or the zoning subcommittee. I've been on the zoning subcommittee for, I don't know, six or seven months, and um, we have been focusing on um, a bunch of past proposals that almost made it through town meeting about increasing the size of accessory units, I think from. You don't have to actually hold it. It'll oh, stay on. okay. <laughs> I think I'm turning it off then. Um, increasing the size of accessory units um, from 800 or 900 to 1,000 to 1,100 to make that more viable. And we're also looking at um, the footprint of that in s compared to smaller houses. We've been looking at the multi-use buildings um, requirement that um, 
would allow like a parking garage on the first floor or a parking on that and to just make a tweak to that. Um, and also with occlusionary zoning, um, trying to expand that, our current bylaw to include more um, residential developments. And there's a, that's maybe a little more complicated, but the idea um, was, you know, here are things that were already approved, almost made it through town meeting, and so with some changes could probably get through quickly to the t town council, and also they're important and urgent. Um, you know, from my perspective, the zoning subcommittee has really struggled with information about zoning, by, like when changes can come to the town council. Um, we heard that, you know, the town council is waiting for zoning changes, that it can't handle it, um, and now we're hearing about, um, more recently, the planning board and the zoning bylaw subcommittee have heard about, a, you know, a, a, Mr. Mora doing a zoning bylaw re rewrite that's just technical fixes. And um, then, then today, this seems like a very different presentation. So a f more of the zoning bylaw subcommittee meetings have been consumed <laughs> with not understanding how or what we're gonna come to or what the council can ha handle. And also, we're really confused about the information we hear when someone says, the town council can't handle it, and I've talked to my own counselors, and they've said, hey, we're waiting for bylaw changes. So there's just a lot of confusing information. Um, so it seems like now the planning department is, and the, um, I'm assuming the town manager is proposing a zoning bylaw overhaul with three levels. Um, and so I just have to just put it out there, like I'm on these two committees, and I don't have a handle on what's being proposed. And if it's a you know zoning bylaw overhaul, which I would support because it is incredibly dense and confusing. I think um, it'd be nice to know what's being proposed and to do it in a orderly fashion. The three levels make sense to me. An out con outside consultant makes amazing sense to me because that's what Northampton did. Um, the city of Somerville spent seven years overhauling its bylaw. It's an interesting model and it has a lot of form-based zoning, but it's like 700 pages and it's hard to get through, you know, but it's a city, it's a, you know, it's a huge city and so, you know, I, I understand the need for some quick changes. I understand for intermediate changes. Um, on the zoning subcommittee level, we've been super, super focused on housing because those are really urgent in terms of increasing sort of small scale housing and inclusionary zoning. So I feel like all these committees and things, we need to kind of communicate better and maybe better communication with our own planning department. I'm just kind of, it feels chaotic to me and maybe this is normal and you're probably looking at me thinking, yeah, we've been doing that for a year, but it's hard to, as a committee or a planning board, to work on things without knowing what your partners are doing, so. Thank you. Um, with that, I'm gonna go back to the question I had that I asked Dave on under 3C, the designating the CRC member to potentially attend planning board meetings regarding the master plan update. I had a question for, that Dave thought Chris would be able to better answer, which is, um, for the master plan update in the next two weeks or so, do you see the planning board receiving any actual written proposals for updating the master plan from any of the sections, like any actual updates? I think that the planning board will be receiving um, an update on March 4th. March 4th okay. So if you wanted to have someone attend that meeting, that might be helpful. Um, it may be possible for us to get something to the zoning subcommittee um, sooner than that, but the way things are looking right now, I doubt that that's true. Um, so I think that probably March 4th and maybe get something to the zoning subcommittee by March 3rd, they meet the day before now, um, might be more realistic. Okay, thank you. So right. that is, for the committee's purview, that is a week after our next CRC meeting, so that means I don't think we need to at this point, unless the committee uh, believes differently, designate an interim person to attend those meetings until we can designate an actual person. We're missing a member today, mm -hmm. so we're hesitant to designate someone. We're missing a committee member. Um, Chris? So while we were talking about zoning, I was thinking that it may be worthwhile for you to designate a CRC member to attend planning board meetings to talk about zoning. Um, and that member, you know, perhaps would be able to speak for the group if the group had discussed any of the items, could report to the planning board about what CRC thought about what was coming up, and then could um, 
you know, be a, a source of communication, um, just as you've um, suggested that that would work out with the master plan. I think you know that would certainly improve communication, but I think it would have to be clear when that person was talking as an individual and when that person was talking as a liaison from the CRC. Thank you. Ms. Orthia. We have not really, the CRC has not talked about specific issues of zoning. We would do so if we were told, here's some issues, talk about it first. You know, so we would have to do that. Um, I, I think that's why we're embarking on this conversation about a process for when zoning changes happen. How do we talk about them and when and all? So yes, that's, that's where we're getting to. Um, okay, so that brings us to, I think, announcements. Did, did you have something you wanted to say, Dave? Um, I guess you know, before we conclude on zoning, yes. I, I think this has been a great conversation. Thank you to Rob and Chris for joining us. Um, I think you know Janet made some some good points. I I think we all have been patient throughout 2019. We we had a new form of government. Um, you all are are doing a wonderful job overall, balancing all all of the things and and. You know, I go back to, uh, I'm not sure who, who said, you know, we're flying the plane. You're flying the plane as, as you're building the plane. So it seems to me that the time is now right for us to um, develop a process for uh, looking at the zoning bylaw. And I think Rob and Chris kind of outlined the framework of that that still needs to be vetted with the zoning subcommittee and the planning board in more detail. And then going back to what Andy said earlier in the meeting, um, communication and collaboration. That's, that's what we're talking about here. Um, my last point really is about, you know, I, I do think we need to be as efficient as possible. So we're, we're going to stumble a little here in the early going as we, as we figure out this process, but we all need to be cognizant of bandwidth of, of the council, of the zoning subcommittee, the planning board, and of staff. So we just need to figure out how this back and forth communication goes. To, to make sure we're not duplicating efforts, et cetera. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big lift, um, but it's, it's critical. I think we all know, as Rob and Chris said, and I think many planning board members through the years have said, the bylaw needs to be redone. And so if we're all engaged, if we're all committed to it, um, I think we roll up our sleeves and, and, and dive in. Dorothy. So in your mind, when the um, issues of zoning, which the zoning bylaw has a committee, the zoning subcommittee has been working on, um, when do you think those issues could come, I guess, before CRC and then before the town council for a vote? Yeah, well, I, I would look to Chris or Rob, and I'm not sure we're quite there yet. I, I, I think zoning subcommittee and the planning board still need to talk that through, right? Flood mapping is needs to come it's because we're on a, there's, yeah. there's federal and other timelines that we must adhere to. But I think it would be up to the zoning subcommittee and planning board working with Rob and Chris to, to create, are there some things that can come now um, or and, and then later, are there some things that are grouped? As Rob, I think, mentioned, you, you bundle a, a bunch of things that are related and bring that. Um, but I think it's a little premature to say what's, what's coming next. I was wanting to know whether we're talking about three months, six months, nine months. Oh, one month, probably, for flood mapping, right? Well, flood mapping is, is coming. You don't? Okay. Um, we have a six-month Once all the appeals have been resolved, and we do believe there's going to be one appeal, then we're gonna get a letter from uh, FEMA that will say, um, you are now entering your six month compliance period. So during that six month compliance period is when you'll be asked to adopt the maps and the zoning. So um, my guess is the, based on FEMA's schedule, and I say that in quotes, um, last summer, we thought we were going to get a letter from them in July, and we didn't get the letter till November. So, 
it could be a while, but I just wanted to let you know that it could happen soon, but it may not happen till early next fall, somewhere in that window. And we'll keep in touch with you and let you know when it's coming. And I think that Mr. Mora needs to have his conversation with the planning board about what his thoughts are about um, updating, rewriting the zoning bylaw before we have a sense of whether the planning board wants to move ahead and, and bring certain things to you ahead of this big rewrite or not. We really don't know right now. Um, so. Okay, okay, thank you. So I had inadvertently skipped something on the agenda, which is council housing policy. Um, that was referred to us. We don't have time for a full initial discussion, but I want to mention what um, Andy alluded to earlier, which is he had forwarded me, and it is it will be in the packet, it is in SharePoint right now, a potential, I read it as more of a resolution um, that would essentially be proposed to the town council on an interim basis of saying we encourage the town to continue with its efforts and investigations on affordable housing while we develop this policy. Um, so what I would like to know from the council, is, from the committee is, is this something they would like to pursue to potentially present to the, count, to the council a, a sort of inner room type resolution or something that says keep up what you're doing while we draft this and if so, then I would ask people to look at what Andy drafted, send me the comments so that I can come up with something for next meeting as a proposed item, um, if that is something this committee would like to pursue. I would like to pursue that. I'm, I'm hearing yes, pursue it. So it is in SharePoint. It will be on what Andy drafted will be on the website as part of this packet um, so that I can include something in the next packet. If there are any requested changes to that, please email me directly. Um, and so before I post the next one, we'll, we'll see if it can go up on letterhead and stuff like that. Um, with that, that's all I'm going to do with council housing policy right now. Given time, I was not sure we would get to it anyway. So. Next is announcements. Are there any announcements? I am not seeing any other than I do want to make an announcement as we move into zoning bylaw changes as things come up. Um, at some point, we will have to hold hearings. They will probably be joint with the planning board. The planning board meets Wednesday nights. I foresee that we will join them at their meeting for their hearings instead of attempting to do them at 8.30 in the morning. Um, so I will try my best to give you as much notice as possible on when those are looking to be scheduled so that we can mark our calendars um, for those because it will be noticed as a joint meeting <coughs> and so we will need a quorum of this committee at those meetings. But just keep in mind, I think the meetings start at 7 p.m. and so the hearings would generally be at 7 um, for something like that. But, but I wanted to put that out there as as we go forward with this, we might end up being having a, a couple of dual Wednesday meetings, morning and evening, or things like that. Um, but I'll, I'll figure out something. The next item is next meeting agenda preview. I think we are moving into a time that, so as of this meeting, we'll have the designation of a CRC member for pl master plan update. That'll be back on the agenda. Zoning bylaw, flow chart type thing will be back on the agenda housing policy will be on the agenda. Um, I do not plan on this point. There were other things on the sort of future agenda items that have referrals. There are two transportation issues we have not dealt with in a while. I do not plan on putting them on our agenda given the intended GOL change or proposal to change committees. Those items would not stay with this committee if we adopt a new committee structure. And so at this point, given our enormous amount of things to do with planning, zoning, and housing policy, I intend to just leave them sit there until we see whether there is a new council structure. And if so, they will get passed on to that new committee and off of our agenda completely. So those are the three things I see putting on 
the agenda. If there are master plan changes, I will try to get them on the agenda so that we can talk about any updates coming to the planning board on that March 4th. They would be on the agenda for hopefully our February 26th meeting. Um, so it would be a full agenda. We probably won't get to everything, but and my guess is that's going to be generally the agenda for the next couple months is zoning, master plan, and housing um, in some various configurations. Uh, anyone have any requests for any additional agenda items? Not seeing any, so any items not anticipated? Not seeing any, therefore I am going to declare us adjourned at 1023 a.m. Thank you all.